Well, there's no place like home. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Watson Brown Show, presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Alongside Tennessee Tech head coach Watson Brown, I'm your host, Buddy Pearson. Well, after traveling over 5,000 miles the last three weeks, the Tennessee Tech Golden Eagles finally return home to the friendly confines of Tucker Stadium this week. Having gone to Eugene, Oregon, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and Murray, Kentucky in the last three weeks, Coach, I bet you're glad to be back in Cookville. I'm, I, they had to show us how to get home. <laughs> it's, been, it's, been a, it's been a haul, and when you lose, I think it makes those road trips longer. And, and uh, we, we got thumped twice through that time and had a, a really tough double overtime game. And so it's been a really hard stretch on us, buddy. And, and uh, we, are, we are excited to get home. We're excited to see if we can get some of these guys well. We'd love to get back before this season's over to a semblance of the team that we started with. And uh, we just got to hang on right now through this, through this tough stretch. Really, really tough loss, but a loss is a loss. Right. In college football today, uh, you, can, you can get thumped pretty good. The score can get on you pretty fast and no excuses for that, but it, it just happens. And, and uh, you have to keep your team on an even keel through it. And yeah, we're 0-2 in the league. We were 2-0 and this time last year. One of those was at home that we barely beat SEMO in and run a close game at EIU. But we played two road games. We're right. the only team in the OVC that's been on the road two straight weeks. And and uh, maybe now that we can get home, we can find a way to win one. I know this next one's a very big game for us. And Coach, I know you said something in your insider lunch today that I thought was, um, you know, that really stood out. This is a different team than the one that got on the plane to go to Eugene, Oregon, mostly because you've had 21 guys in the last three weeks uh, that have been hurt. Yeah, we've had a lot of injuries. And what happened? what's happened, a lot of those injuries are older guys. And so all of a sudden our team's become very young. And uh, I know I was looking out there some in the, in the ball game and freshman, 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 and that's not the way we started at all. We've lost our, we've lost our stinger a little bit, lost our confidence. It's my job to get that back up and hopefully we'll have a different, uh, different team show up Saturday night uh, to play Jacksonville State. Well, I know two of the top offenses in the league uh, collided when you went up to Murray State. Both teams very potent on offense. And uh, for a while there, it looked as though uh, these two offensive juggernauts were going to slug it out and uh, what looked like it was going to be a, a, an offensive slugfest. Let's take a look at those first half highlights presented by TTUsports.com. Well, Coach, if there was a positive, uh, Racer won through a shoe before the game, so he wasn't going to be able to run around the track. I and, uh, was so <laughs> glad not to see that horse running around that track. I'm, I'm telling you, uh, he might have been touching some of our guys. He got injured, too. Things kind of <laughs> went south a little bit on the opening kickoff. Oh, uh, Darius Van Leer just uh, couldn't handle it, and you guys were pinned deep, uh, four and out, and here just, comes Murray. Just poor by Ladarius, and then uh, we get held on the three-yard line for three plays and shank a punt for 27 yards. <laughs> Give them the ball on the 30-yard line, not a good thing to do to your to defense. It's new you're in for a long night anyway. Uh, we do come right back again and drive it 80 yards and go down and tie it up 7-7. Seven, seven, uh, beautiful uh, kind of our wide receiver screen thing out there that uh, we, we throw a lot in. Uh, Cody Matthews made a real nice run after the catch. Murray State comes right back. Casey Brockman, a one-yard touchdown run. Not only can he pass, but I mean pass, but he can run too. Yeah, they got they got two quick scores here, very quick, and and go up 21-7. Uh, both of them long drives, and uh, uh, we're not we're not matching points at this point right now. And, uh, they got a whole lot of points early, yeah. and, and, and that's when I think we kind of tanked it a little bit. This was the surprising and disappointing thing to me, uh, that they ran the ball well from tackle to tackle. Uh, they couldn't do that a year ago as well, and, and even Oregon couldn't do that. Uh, but now we're getting going again a little bit here. And nice to have Bud Golden back. It's good to see him not limping. Uh, he, he came back to practice for the first time last week, and and glad to have him back going full speed. Uh, good to get Ladarius loose with a, with a kickoff return. Uh, boy, he is fast, and, and we just hadn't gotten him loose the way we want to get him loose yet. And maybe this will give him some confidence, also give our kickoff team a little confidence, too, to, to help us down the stretch. So at halftime, Coach, you're down 49-21. Uh, the highlights, obviously, there was uh, Bud Golden returning from the injury, uh, scoring on a 14-yard run, and then Ladarius Van Leer, who, you know, who had his troubles on the opening kickoff. But we knew uh, at some point this kid was going to break one this season, and it was good to see him finally yeah, do that. Yeah, he, he's, he's going to have a lot of them in his career here. But I think that will help him. That will give him some confidence and get him going. And, 
He didn't get to return any at Oregon. Got to return very few at SEMO. The ball's going in the end zone now that they moved it up right. a lot more. And and then we got a lot of returns the other night for two reasons. They're scoring a lot, and and their guy wasn't kicking it in the end zone. And we did not do it very well overall for the for the night. But the the one return was a start one way and kind of reverse it back, and it's a setup return to do that. And team executed it well, but uh, Ladarius ran it very well. Was there any kind of adjustments that you could make at a halftime down 28? Yeah, I mean, we, we wanted to stop the wide receiver screens. That was what killed us in the first half, really. And uh, we did do a better job of that in the second half. I thought we played those type things better. Uh, what got us really, uh, the, the surprise to me, was running the ball as well as they did. And they've got two really good backs. They haven't run the ball near that well on anybody they've played yeah. so far. And and I don't know that we knew how good those backs were because they just hadn't gotten loose much yet. But uh, they got loose against us, and we did not tackle them well in, in space. A lot of missed tackles, buddy. I, I thought the two disappointing things defensively were tackle-to-tackle -tackle runs that I wasn't expecting and the missed tackles in space that we had that we didn't miss tackles like that at Oregon. Right. And uh, there's a lot of different people out there. I understand that. But we've got to tackle a lot better the next time EIU rolls to town, and that's the next time we play that style of offense. We line up now and play three teams are going to run it right down your throat. So it's a different style, but but the fourth game from now again will be AIU, which does exactly what Murray does in a lot of ways, and we got to see if we can play that better. But you really do match up better with the JSU's and the Eastern Kentucky's in the way they run. Well, right at we you. do because of injury. Our injuries aren't up front. Yeah. They're not in the linebackers' defensive line. They're in our secondary. Right. And uh, we we got caught with a lot of guys out. A lot of guys trying to play that hadn't practiced. Uh, against that and uh, trying to tackle in space. We, we didn't do a good job of it. And that, that's what it's built on. It's built on recruiting really speedy guys, spread them out, get them in space, and, and, and then you got to get them on the ground. So we didn't match them well that night. That's not an excuse. We didn't play well either. Uh, but they did catch us where our injuries were. All of our injuries, buddy, have been in skill positions on offense and defense. Yeah. It's not been the linemen and linebackers. It's not the H-backs, tight ends. It's the all the skill guys on offense. Every one of them have had something. And then just our secondary has just been depleted as it can be. Out of five secondary guys that we play, all four of the five positions have lost the starter at some point. Wow. Will Johnson's the only one that's still out there playing, and I'll knock on wood that he don't want to be <laughs> the best one because around. we haven't told him that. He hadn't figured out that he's the only one that has not been hurt yet. So, And he's coming off a of knee surgery from last year. Well, there were some uh, bright spots with some young players getting some playing time and doing pretty good as we check out the second half highlights against the Racers brought to you by Miller Lite. Tough way to start the second half, Coach. Trey Lamb comes out, yeah, uh, throws it right through Derrick's hands. Right through Derrick's hands. Trey, Derrick is a little bit deep on it. Trey leads him too much this way. Derrick catches it with his big old hand, tips it right to the corner. Uh, that's when I said, my gracious, are we snake bit uh, for the night. But this was a nice play. This was a check down to... Uh, to Adam Urbano that where they covered the deep crosser and uh, we checked it back to Adam. Really nice play by Trey and Adam. Cody uh, Matthews had a big night. Uh, Cody Matthews with three catches for 119 yards. Yeah, they're, they're doubling Derrick and so when you take, you, you drag Cody across the field and they're doubling Derrick on that side, it just left him over there by himself some. He had another big play that, that Trey just forced the ball to Derrick for another one, but this was a beautiful play here to Steve Wilson and Steve is Derrick's backup right now at X, and I think he's going to be an outstanding, he's a freshman and going to be an outstanding player here. Sophomore Tredarius Goff finally gets Brockman, brings him down. Yeah, Brockman didn't have to carry it too many times. When he did, we did a good job on him, but look at the hole in there for the on the run. It's just, uh, that's not us. That's not us, and that was the disappointing thing in the game that we didn't play the run better. Dwayne Brady with a 12-yard touchdown, comes right back and rushes for a 25-yard. And you talk about the missed tackles, you can see it on that run right there. There's many missed tackles and, and a gash inside to run the ball. And then number six gets loose. Six and 34 are really good players. Uh, again, we got, we got good pressure. We got Every time we pressured Brockman with four rushers, nothing good happened for them. Every, yeah. and, and, but it just, it, it's not enough. We are a better pass rush team than we were a year ago when we rushed four. We are. Uh, it's good to see Darian Stone uh, hook up with Chris Cates. I, I'm really excited about Chris Cates. I think he's going to—he's made two big catches in the last two games, 
and they were both very hard catches. He had a chance to get another touchdown, and the guy just barely batted the ball out of his hands, if you remember the corner out deep in yeah. the end zone. But Chris Cates is going to be a really good player, and it's good to see Darian get work because he's got to take on our young quarterbacks, but he's, he's the heir apparent to, to be the next guy when Trey leaves. And it was good to see, you know, at least the game ended on a positive. Last play of the game was Stone connecting with Cates for the touchdown. Buddy, our players played hard. It, it's not, it wasn't effort. It's, it's we've, we've lost our stinger a little bit. Uh, uh, we were younger. It makes this confidence level go down, I think. Uh, when, you've, when you don't have some of those seniors out there as your leaders, I think that hurts you a little bit. And, but our problem isn't effort. It's, it's, it's just getting that it factor back again and getting that head up and getting confidence again. And, and it's uh, when we got one of the best teams in the league coming to town, it's not the easiest thing to do. But I think we will. I think we'll, we'll look different Saturday night. And after a couple of games in the OVC, you see the OVC championship race starting to take ship just a little bit. Uh, you see some teams uh, starting to uh, make their way out as we uh, take a look at the scoreboard. Brought to you by the OVC Digital Network. Uh, last week, it was some big games. Number 19, Eastern Kentucky, a winner 28-16 to 16 over UT Martin, Eastern Kentucky. 16. Martin was ahead most of that game, and Eastern got two quick scores in the fourth quarter. I thought Martin would knock them off, uh, so that one surprised me a little bit. Eastern may be a little better, and I'm hoping. Other, uh, other scores around uh, the OVC was Eastern Illinois by 50 over Austin P. They were 51 at the half. We were 49 at the half. These two teams are hard to stop when they get going, and and uh, they're scoring points on everybody. It's not just us. And, and uh, it, it seems to be feast or famine a little bit, buddy. These fast pace, too fast pace. There's three of us in this league, and all of us are in the 30s and 40s scoring points. But uh, these two are even fast, up throwing it more than we are. And when they get going, they're really hard to stop. Jacksonville State, who comes to Cookville this week, a winner over Southeast Missouri, 31-16. That was 17-16 in the fourth quarter for a long time, and Jacksonville got two scores, a little bit like the Eastern game at UT Martin. Jacksonville put them away in the fourth quarter and ran the ball really well on them, uh, ran the ball really well on SEMO. A lot of, lot of rushing yards. And in the only non-conference tilt, it was Tennessee State remaining undefeated by defeating Arkansas Pine Bluff 40-13. to And as we check out the... Uh, standings coach, you got uh, Eastern Kentucky and Eastern Illinois at 2-0, and then uh, TSU at 1-0. and They've only played one conference game. Martin, Jacksonville State, <coughs> SEMO, Murray State all with one loss. It's, you still don't have a clue. Uh, Eastern Illinois has been at home for both games. Uh, we were on the road for both games. Everybody else has had one road and one home. Uh, Eastern Kentucky is the one that's won the road game and gives them the opportunity to be 2-0. and uh, they, they won at UT Martin and a very good road win. But there's not been very many good road wins yet. Most of the people have won their home games, and most of the people have lost their road game. And, of course, as I say, we're the only one that's played. Well, no, excuse me, Austin Peay's played three games, and two of them have been on the road. Wow. So uh, had not been many road wins yet in the league. It's time now for our Golden Eagle Player Profile, brought to you by the TTU Athletics Association. This week we hear from sophomore defensive back Austin Talent. Let's take a look. My father actually got me started in football and I was uh, nine years old uh, at Wallen, a uh, little old town, you know, it was little grasshopper days. He actually got me started. I really didn't want to play, but he kind of, you know, pushed me into it and I'm, I'm so thankful that he did. Yeah, I was quarterback all the way through high school and, uh, you know, I played defense some, but never like I have been. Oh, defense for sure. I like hitting people, which I didn't realize that until I was in college. <laughs> The best advice I ever received has got to be from Coach Pugh. Uh, he's actually making shirts for us, and it says the pain of discipline. You know, it's talking about the pain of discipline and, and the pain of regret, and how the pain of regret lasts so much longer than the, the pain of discipline. You know, because the pain of discipline only lasts so long, and the pain of regret lasts a lifetime. The best aspect of my game, uh, honestly, I need to improve drastically in everything that uh, I do, you know, and I, I think that's true for most athletes, but um, I would. If, if I had a judge right now, I'd probably say tackling, you know. Best player on this year team, I don't know if I can name an individual. I would definitely have to say the offensive line, you know. I don't think, you know, any offensive line gets the credit they deserve. But uh, our offensive line is, you know, they definitely play the biggest part on our team this year. Honestly, the best thing that got happened to me during my freshman year was I, I was fortunate enough to play, you know. And unfortunately, it was due to injury. But, uh, I mean, I just got to count my blessings and, uh, you know, and, and Thank God for that, that I was able to play and, uh, you know, able to make a sort of an impact for this team. 
My motivation to play, I would probably have to say my grandmother. Uh, she's she's one of the hardest working women that I know, and I'm proud that she's proud. You know, and and that that means the world to me that she's proud. My position coach is Coach Grimes, and he he's probably one of the funniest coaches we have. You know, he has a great sense of humor. Uh, he, he's a younger guy, so you know, he, and he was an athlete at Tech, so he understands what it is like. And uh, he's he's just a great guy. I, I love him to death. He's probably one of my favorite coaches. That might be a little bit biased. I'm Austin Talent. Coach Austin Talent made a big impact last season. Unfortunately, he's one of the walking wounded now. I know you're missing him big time. Oh, are we missing him? He's he's a silent leader, uh, just to be a sophomore. But the kids just respect him so much. Uh, probably the best tackler on our team. Just a pure open field, open space tackler. I think Austin's the best we got. And Yeah, and to him, and, he said uh, that's what he needed to improve on. Well, Austin, I, I get on Austin <laughs> all the time because he's so hard on himself. He just, uh, he's never happy with his play. And I, and I tell Austin, I say, Austin, sometimes you take that and make it a detriment because you, 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 you lose your positiveness yeah. just being so hard on yourself. But that's the way he is, and that's, that's why he's such a good player. And, and hopefully uh, he's got a shot to be back this week. Boy, would, would we love to have him back playing Jacksonville State. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Well, it's time now to go inside Golden Eagle football, brought to you by Mid-State Sports Medicine. This week, we look at the young men who keep their eyes on tech football all the time. They are the filmers. Check it out. Well, uh, the day-to-day -day operations for football here at Tennessee Tech, uh, it's kind of complex um, for practices. We, we, we set up about an hour before uh, we set up our scheduler, what we're going to be filming, all the different types of drills uh, for the team that day. Then moving into practice, um, we're up here this, you know, a little couple of minutes before they are, and uh, as soon as they're done, we're, we're coming down the lift because we're having to get inside and, uh, and put the film up on the network as quick as possible. Uh, that's, uh, that's, that's the run through of, of how our practices work. Um, we live capture our practices straight into our laptops, so it makes it very easy for us to put it onto our network so all coaches can watch it very quickly. Well, our, sta our staff is actually uh, pretty small. We're actually the smallest in the OBC. Uh, we, have, we have two filmers on hand, and uh, we also have a guy in, in sports information that helps us out very periodically on uh, getting, uh, getting film up and stuff like that. Uh, but we do only have two people that's on staff, but, but we're proud of that because we, we have a very fast upload time getting our film up for our coaches and also for the rest of the conference to watch. Um, and we can, we can break down a game, uh, really compete with about anybody. After a home game or away game, uh, once we get our film uploaded, that's just half the battle. We also have to get all of our OBC opponents' film uh, into the system as well. And what we do with that is we really are preparing out uh, two, three weeks in advance to allow our graduate assistants to start putting in the formation that that other team is running. Home and away games during the game itself, it's actually the same setup. Um, the difference is, is as soon as the games are over here at home, we can walk straight into our offices, link it up to our network. It's, auto it's immediately accessible for our coaches to watch. With away games, it's a little bit different. Coach Brown loves to watch his film on the way home, win or lose. He wants his film to watch. He wants to watch that game that we just had. So we actually, it's a little bit harder because our office turns into the front seat of the bus where we're trying to get the film ready to go. We can get a game done on the road in about 20 to 25 minutes as well. Um, the real work for for the, the film crew is is really not just doing the film, but it's actually once once the game or the practice is over, getting inside, getting this film up so it's accessible for all the coaches as soon as possible, because that's key when the games. Coach, just how important is video to a coach? Oh, it's uh, Football is the, really the only sport that uses video like we do. and You coach off of video. I mean, it, we don't even teach a lot in practice. We do the fast pace so much that our coaches, I don't let them stop and say a whole lot, but we bring them straight off the practice field. These guys have that video back in our offices, and 30 minutes later, those players are upstairs watching the practice. Yeah. So they finish watching what they just did. That's when we coach more with them than even on the field. And the breakdown stuff that you do in football for, the, for your opponent and the game plans off of it, all of it comes from video, and we've got to have that by Sunday afternoon. Not only does Lee have to have that done, our game done for us to watch, but then immediately we start watching Jacksonville State on Sunday afternoon, and, and Lee's got to have all that in there. So it, it, it's unbelievable the money that's spent on this stuff, and it's also unbelievable what it means in our sport. Yeah, I would say these guys mean a whole lot to the program. Oh, they're fantastic. Uh, through all the ones we've had uh, since I've been here, Andrew Neff is, was fantastic. Now Lee is 
the guy doing it for us, and he'll pass it on to another one. And <laughs> and uh, I don't know what we do without Livingston right now. You know, we, we kind of own Livingston. Yeah, they produce some filmers, but, don't yeah, they? We, they're, they're, <laughs> i got to keep recruiting out of Livingston to bring in filmers. Well, one of the most attended events in the Upper Cumberland is Cityscape's Fall Fun Fest, and there was plenty of fun to be had by TTU student athletes as we check out TTU Athletes in the Community, brought to you by Pepsi. Uh, we're just out here today just having a good time with these kids, trying to, to get a little uh, tech baseball recognition in the community and just kind of hang out and have a little fun with them. The kids, some of these guys are actually really stinking good. Uh, most of us struggle to get it in there. And then there's this one kid that's right over there right now in the orange jacket that I think he's missed like five times all day. Uh, it's just going gonna, gonna to help us get a little better fan recognition, hopefully help us get a little better attendance at games. and. Um, just really be known in the community for really just having a lot of fun, and uh, and that's about it, man. Just having fun with them. an awesome shirt here have, a, have, a have some silly bands right. come to some games man we appreciate it Coach Fall Fun Fest is always a good time, and I, I think the little girl in the green dress needs to play on our scramble team for the alumni <laughs> tournament. But better me. <laughs> we need to fix that carpet now where that yeah. ball will roll in that hole and hit that carpet and the ball was going sideways. That's what I blame it on the green dress. to play the break a little more. That's yeah. not true. I think it's me that makes that ball go sideways. But again, that's, that's, a, that's a neat deal. Yeah. All right, stick around. we got more Watson Brown Show coming up. We're going to take your Twitter questions, plus we're going to talk about this week's opponent, Jacksonville State. There's more Watson Brown Show presented by IWC Cash and Carry. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Watson Brown Show. Well, if you have a Twitter question for Coach Brown, you can tweet it at TTU Golden Eagles. Of course, we do have some Twitter questions for you, Coach. First of all, you had a chance to play a lot of freshmen at Murray State. Can you turn that into a positive? Yes. I think that we get these guys back well, and I think we got a chance. We got 21 guys. We got, I think, 15 of them can be back by Eastern Kentucky. And then we got a semblance of a football team again. But we could be better because we've had to play a lot of young guys in the place of these guys. Now they've got some experience, and in the long run, it's going to help our depth, number one. Number two, it's really going to help next year's football team a bunch. We'll, we'll, we'll come back with a lot more experience than I even thought that we would uh, by next season. Now, uh, we saw Bud Golden, we saw Adam Urbano. Uh, the question here, are all your running backs healthy now? They're both, they're both back if we didn't. I'll find out tomorrow morning if there's an issue with one of them, but I don't think so. I, I said today at the luncheon, I, it's the first time we've played with them healthy all year together. And I thought they both did a good job in the game, had some nice plays. And again, they're, they're both so different that we can use them well. And, and again, by playing Radier and Ur, yeah. uh, because they were both hurt, right. uh, it's, it's gained some experience for us. And Radier is going to be outstanding. He may be better than all of them. Yeah, he looks uh, good. He, he's going to be a really good player. And we didn't want to have to use him. That was one of those things we just had to. But in the long run, I think it'll help us. And what about Tremaine Hudson? We saw him kind of hobble out of the game. What's his status? I, I think he's doubtful for this week. He's one of those 21. And I think he can be back for Eastern Kentucky, but I think I think we may have lost him for this week. And he got hurt on his first play, so he didn't play against Murray either. So every skill player on our offensive football team now has, has been hurt or out, including Derrick. He hasn't been out, but he didn't practice last week a lot with a hip pointer. 
Nobody knew that, but uh, I don't think he was full speed in the game. I think he will be for this one, though. Jacksonville State comes to Tucker Stadium. You know the Gamecocks very well. You've beat them the last two years. Uh, had some success against them. Well, and we seem to catch them at a very important time in our season. And uh, it's a it's been a big game the last two years. If we lose at Jacksonville last last year, uh, we're out of the race. Right. Uh, we're out of the race. We won the game. Uh, we knocked them out of the race the year before by by getting really hot in the second half. And here we are this week. If we don't win this game, we're probably out of the race. Well, we are out of the race. It'd be three losses. And so we're, we're kind of at the same spot we were a year ago. We, we, it's a very important game. But it is them, too. They, they can't go down two in the league after three games. And, and I don't think they would feel like they got a real shot either. So we got to, we got to, it's a big game for both teams. Plus, you got Washon Ely, uh, the transfer from Georgia. You've got Marcus Ivory back. Uh, you know, you've, you've got some of those players back. Um, but uh, last year's game, I just remember that just being a, a slugfest, a, a real true slobber knocker. It was, and it, it usually is because they make you play that kind of game. And uh, we did a good job of defensively against these guys last year. I thought we won the game on the defensive side. We did not start well offensively at all. And then we got uh, a lot better as the game went on and really got going in the second half. But defense, defense won that game. And a big turnover late in the game uh, was, was the difference in the ball game. It, do you think Derrick is going to be able to make an impact like he did against SEMO, against Jacksonville State? Oh, he made a big impact against Murray uh, because they – I've never seen a team put as much of a game plan on one guy as Murray did. And, and uh, so, yes, I think he's an impact no, whether he catches five or 18. I think, he, I think he's an impact in every game the rest of the way if he stays healthy. Tim Benford was a decoy in this game. Uh, he went in with a pulled hamstring. Yes, and, I remember. And, uh, he pulled it on Wednesday. Not a bad one. Yeah. Uh, but he only caught two balls. I think we only threw it, to him, threw it to him three times in the whole game. But, again, they're out doubling him most of the time and gave us a chance to run the ball. And how big is it going to be, Coach, to have the fans here on Saturday night? Uh, huge. We've, we've got to have a positive, good support because uh, – uh, it's been a tough road road, uh, road way to go here, and we're ready to get home. We're home for the next five, and we got to start winning some of these games. Well, Coach, we wish you the best of luck. Tennessee Tech will be hosting Jacksonville State this Saturday night at Tucker Stadium. Kickoff is at 7. The tailgate park opens at 4. You can listen to the broadcast on Magic 98.5 beginning at 6 p.m. For Tennessee Tech head coach Watson Brown, I'm Buddy Pearson. Of course, you can see all the highlights and uh, everything that happened in the game right here on the Watson Brown Show next week, so be sure and join us. The Watson Brown Show has been brought to you by IWC Cash and Carry, Miller Lite, Mid-State Sports Medicine, and Pepsi.